else that you hand up that you'll want to come around and grab them. So, um, and then uh, Linda will be giving her story. So turn to John chapter chapter 5. Three, four, five, six. We're going to look at verses 3, 4, 5, and 6. In the east lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred the water. Then who has ever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Now of a certain now a certain man was there who had an infirmity thirty eight years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been in that condition a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no, I have no man to put me into this pool when the water is still. But when I am coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your bed and walk. Now, with that story, it goes by pretty quick. But if you read the scripture, how long was this man sick for? <coughs> Paralyzed 38 years. For a very long time, every day they laid him at this well, not being able to move. And his only hope that he thought was if that water stirs, if I can be the first one down in there, I can be made well. Do you think his heart's desire was to be made whole and not to be paralyzed anymore? Yes. Okay, think about this. But every time that water stirred, somebody would get in there before him. He was paralyzed. There's no way he's going to do it himself. 
So he was always dependent on somebody else. Now, do you think it tells you from the first verse that we read that there was a lot of sick people and lame people around this well? You ever ask the question, why did Jesus go to this one man? Now, we started this by showing you that if you see Jesus, you see the Father. Do you want to know what God is like? God is just like Jesus Christ. When Jesus was here as a man, as a human being like me and you, he looked at that man and he had compassion on him. He had compassion on all of them, but there was something about this guy that struck him and made him go and talk to him. And this is the same thing that Jesus asked from me and you. That as we live our day-to-day -day lives, that we are not blind to the people who are around us. That we have compassion on them. That we understand that they're humans just like we are. Now, what made this man in this condition, it doesn't say. What we know is that his heart's desire was he didn't want to be in that condition anymore. That's the same story about us and sin. And you little guys need to realize that as you continue to get older, that you're born with a nature that wants you to do wrong things. But Jesus came to show us what God is really like, and that God has come to not leave us in this condition. We do not have to stay like that paralyzed man at the well. And that Jesus sees us and he hears our cries, God, I want to be changed. Do you believe that God can change you? Yes. Do you believe that God has the power to change you? Yes. The question is, is your heart crying out for God to change you? See, because a lot of us want God to change us, but only about that much, you know. I don't like this much, I like the rest of me, so just change that much. But with God, it's either all or it's nothing. Jesus doesn't ask for 99% of your heart. It's either all or it's nothing. But listen, Jesus walked by all these people that were sick, and he focused on this one man who'd been there for 38 years. And asked him, do you want to be made well? And what was his answer? No, Lord, I like this. I want to stay this way. Now you laugh, but isn't that us in our sin condition? Think about that. Jesus is just as willing to heal you today from that condition as he was to heal that man at the well. And tell him, rise up and walk. Now listen, doesn't it amaze you that the man didn't go, dude, do you know I'm paralyzed? Rise up and walk, really? Jesus said, rise up and walk, and what did the guy do? Do you see what belief does for you? And do you see what unbelief does for me? You can go back to your seats now after we have prayer. Okay, I'll have prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for the opportunity to be here, to share your word, and to start to grasp and understand the power that is contained in this word, that is contained in you. Father, what I ask is that you help each of us, especially the young children here, to know who you are and know the power that you have available for us in every aspect of our life. Give us your grace and your mercy for this we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen.